Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mephisto and our journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the 5th round of the 1953 season, the French Grand Prix. It was held on the 5th of July, it had 25 entries, all of them taking part in the race, 10 of them however ended up retiring. The race consisted of 60 laps, completed in 2 hours, 44 minutes and 18 seconds. The lineup at the start of the race saw Ascari on Paul Bonetto in 2nd, Villoresi 3rd, Fangio 4th and Jose Froilan Gonzalez started from 5th. Mike Hawthorne won the race, breaking Ascari's winning streak in the process. Fangio finished in 2nd, just 1 second behind, Gonzalez finished in 3rd, 1.4 seconds behind, Ascari came home in 4th, 4.6 seconds down, and Farina rounded off the top 5, he was 1 minute, 7.6 seconds behind the leader. On lap 25, Hawthorne posted the fastest lap of the race, and that was a 2 minute, 41 second lap. So we're back in Reims for the French Grand Prix, and the circuit has been modified somewhat. Apparently because the original layout blocked off the main road into Reims, and the locals weren't too happy about that. Who would have guessed? Anyway, the lap starts off with a long sprint into turn 1, here we used to go on straight ahead. Now we turn right through this long open right-hander. Just before turn 2, another long right-hander, we cut across part of the old circuit. Next is turn 3, a high-speed left-hander, and immediately after that comes turn 4, a very tight hairpin. That takes us onto the longest straight of the track. It is now almost twice as long as it used to be. Along the way we come across where the old hairpin used to be and thus we rejoin the old circuit. Lastly we have the final corner of the track a tight right hand hairpin which actually has been made a bit tighter than it used to be which leads us onto the main straight and that is a lap around this revised Reims circuit. And here we are in qualifying coming around to set our first flying lap. There is a car in front of us. But anyway, that is a 231.8, 6 tenths of a second slower than Ascari, so I'm hoping that we can improve the time a bit. Hopefully the, the car in front of us won't uh, hold us up, and it, it didn't. That is a 230.9. We actually take a provisional pole, which is absolutely fantastic, and I nearly crashed into that um, oblivious Maserati driver. I'm not sure who it was. Then we come around to improve on our time a 230.6 which well improves our uh, provisional pole and hopefully we can start from actually start from pole because there is a glitch I, I talked about it a couple of times before but there is a glitch when the game just gives the AI random times and indeed Andy Higgs starts off from pole which is the first in four seasons which is quite amazing Ascari starts from second Farina third Trintignant is fourth Harry Shell rounding up of the top 5. Next we have Hawthorne in 6th, Rosier 7th, Onofre Marimont is 8th, Felice Bonetto 9th, Jose Freilan Gonzalez 10th, Fangio 11th, Moss 12th, Prince Bira is 13th, 14th is the Grafenried, 15th is Galvez, Lang 16th, then we have Roberto Mieres in 17th, Bera in 18th and finally Ken Wharton down in 19th. So here we are at the Reims at a slightly revised circuit and we're waiting for the flag to drop. No we're not because whoever designed this track decided, decided to put an electric light which didn't exist in the 50s nor the 60s but anyway we start off quite well. Last uh, to Ascari for a couple of seconds there but we managed to pull off a very good start and we kept the lead which is well quite good actually it's what you want to do when you uh, start, start from pole so we have a very good start here and I said start about 200 million times more than I should have done in that section but <laughs> I apologize for that that we come into uh, that's one of the part that's one of the parts we, uh, which we crossed, that's where the old uh, circuit goes to the right down and it seems that Ascari has fallen away from us, not sure what's happening but here is a look at a replay of the start, a bit of uh, wheel spin on my part which caused me to lose a bit of time but again it was only seconds before I 
inched in front of Ascari who is right who was right behind us until turn two. I don't know what happened after turn two. I'm hoping we'll find out. But yeah, that was a very good start from Andy. Quite impressed with that. And here is Ascari coming into turn two, loses control of the car, hits the fence, and then gets collected by a Ferrari, then the Simca, and he's out of the French Grand Prix. Next we have Onofre Marimon in the Maserati, losing control of the car, and then deciding to drive off the track and out of the race. So does Herman Lang in the other Maserati, who stops right next to... Uh, uh, his teammate and he's also out. Next we have uh, Sterling Moss who loses control of his Connaught then gets shunted left and right by a couple of cars and then drives straight into the signpost and that's where he'll be for the rest of the race. No I'm not kidding at all. So that was the let's call, let's call it the first round of retirement. Hopefully there won't be too many more, I mean, I don't mind retirement, but not the entire field as we saw at the Indianapolis 500 and the uh, uh, Dutch Grand Prix. But anyway, we are now on lap 2, building, still building a gap on Mike Hawthorne who is now behind us and we are now looking at Jean Berra who is having su had a suspension problem, he pulls it aside and out of the Grand Prix, uh, French Grand Prix he goes. And next we have a look at Ferlan Gonzalez who joins his fellow Maserati, drive, uh, Maserati drivers at the side of the road there in the final corner. Not entirely sure why, maybe they are having a party and no one else is invited. Although I saw, did saw Sterling Moss there so maybe there's something between Connaught and Maserati we don't know. <laughs> anyway, Louis Rosier, uh, nothing happened until uh, lap 15. Well, except Louis Rosier uh, overtaking Mike Hawthorne, who was chasing us for the majority of the race, but we managed to pull a nice one minute gap, so we shouldn't be in too much trouble. And here we have a look at Juan Manuel Fangio, who has some gearbox uh, problems, and we see him pull into the pits and unfortunately out of the race, so. Well, it could happen. As we continue to slowly build our gap although it's not really necessary there, there are only six more laps left in the race so we're almost there hopefully uh, nothing bad happens and actually something bad did happen because I got distracted and broke very very late into the hairpin and went to the end of the track there uh, at the track limits and crashed and lost my front left wheel and so we are out of the French Grand Prix unfortunately I'm I'm really am idiot I get distracted by all sorts of things so easily and here is a replay again I got distracted didn't pay attention at what was happening broke very late there was nothing I could do at this point and yeah uh, not very happy about it but hey we are still looking good and here we have a look at Roberto Mieres and we don't have to guess what's happening there. We see smoke coming from his engine so obviously it's an engine problem. And finally we are having a look at Rosier who is coming around to win his home Grand Prix so very, he should be a very very happy man well done to him. Uh, unfortunately Andy had to retire from the race but in, he, it won't affect his standing in the championship all that much but it's a bit annoying anyway it would have been nice to get those eight points nine points actually because we managed to set the fastest lap and Simca the Simca should be quite pleased because they are, they are in the top five so at their home Grand Prix so they did pretty well and here are the retirements. Unfortunately, Higgs is among them, but hey, we're still we're doing pretty well in the championship, so no biggie at this point yet. We could still lose the championship. Don't get the wrong idea. We can still lose it, but we're not in that big of a uh, 
problem yet. So let's have a look at the um, career statistics. And here they are. This was Andy's 29th Grand Prix. His best start is first, finally, which means he has one pole position, has set seven fastest laps, his best finishes in first position, has completed 19 laps, 19 of them being in the points because earning a point from the fastest lap counts as finishing in the points, has 12 wins, two of them at the Indianapolis 500, no wins at the Monaco Grand Prix yet, has won two championships, has a total of 126 points, has retired 10 times, has experienced 624 out of 801 total laps, has three bronze trophies, one silver trophy, 12 gold trophies, and as an extension, 12 podiums. And here we have a quick look at the championship standings. Andy Higgs is pretty well up in the lead there with Gonzalez 11 points behind. And we have point scorers all the way down to 12th place. Again, the uh, championship can still be lost at this point if maybe Gonzalez wins three more races and manages to post the f fastest laps in those three uh, races. He can very well take the championship. But at the moment, it's very secure for Higgs, so we don't have to panic too much. And we've already started to drop points, as you can see, in the grayed out results there. Um, it's quite interesting, considering that we have a nine round uh, season and we only get to keep the four best results. But, oh well. Anyway, that is it for the French, French Grand Prix. Not a, not a very good result for Higgs, but he's still doing well in the championship, so we don't have to panic yet. I, I would say, considering that more than half of the field stayed in the race, it's, it was a good race, so I'm happy about that as well. So anyway, don't forget to vote for next season's team. Link is in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, stay sharp.